Ever since Karen's arm broke, life has been bad for her. She got into trouble for cutting her brother's hair, people laughed at her in school, and some jerk named Argelfumpf made mean jokes about her in a YouTube video. Argelfumpf book review, Argelfumpf book review. Karen's worst day begins with her falling out of bed. She's sad to learn she forgot to bring the pants she really likes, but Christy helps Karen feel better by dressing up like her. Now they're twins! Karen is sad again when Andrew finishes the last box of Cruncho's cereal and gets a prize. Karen tries a different box of cereal, but there must have been a mistake because there's no prize inside. How sad. Andrew offers to share the prize with her, twice, but the nice Andrew does not last long. He steals the TV remote when Karen is literally reaching out her hand to grab it. They get into a three-page fight over the TV. It's all for nothing, as Karen's show is interrupted by a special news report. I didn't know TV channels normally air special reports at 9.30 a.m. on Saturdays. Karen wants to play with the dog. Shannon is asleep, so Karen wakes her up, then says, Good, you're awake. Now you can play with me. Karen is a jerk to dogs. They play fetch in the yard, but Shannon loses track of the stick and goes over to David Michael instead. Karen gets mad and gives up on the dog. She grabs Boo-Boo the cat. Boo-Boo gets mad at Karen. He runs up a tree in fear when he sees the neighbor, and he gets angry at Karen when she tries to coax him down. Boo-Boo is my favorite character of this series, by far. I love all the silly expressions he makes. And now I'm kind of sad because he doesn't play much of a role in future books. I want to see a lot more of Boo-Boo. The Papadakis kids come over to invite them to a bike ride and picnic. Karen calmly explains to Hanny she can't ride bikes. Asking her to ride a bike is rude. But this is Karen we're talking about. So her calm, measured response quickly morphs into Karen yelling at Hanny because she's a bad friend. Hanny gets mad at her because Karen's having a bad day. No, Karen, Hanny is mad at you because you yelled at her for trying to include you. Karen tries to cheer up by playing checkers with Christy. She gets mad because she's not good enough to win on her own. Karen wants to play with the dog. Shannon is asleep, and Karen can't wake her up because that's rude. Wait, what? what? That's the exact opposite of what she did earlier. Karen complains to her stuffed animal when she notices it's been torn. Elizabeth sews the cat back together. She says a good way to stop a bad day is to pretend to start over from the beginning again. Karen tries that, but things quickly turn bad. The wrong person drops off the mail, and Andrew gets a package. Karen hopes it will be a boring package, but it's some great movies. So, Karen insults Andrew and makes him cry. Dad tells her to apologize. Karen says, no. Then she continues insulting Andrew for four panels. Dad, you should have stopped Karen immediately instead of letting her finish her insult speech. Dad sends Karen to her room. She yells and stomps because it's not fair. She's being punished for having a bad day. No, Karen, you're being punished for purposely making your brother cry. She stomps around and sings loudly so Dad will let her out of timeout early. And at works, Dad is easily manipulated. A better parent wouldn't have rewarded Karen's misbehavior with less time out. The ice cream truck shows up. Karen wants an Italian ice, but they don't have cherry. She'll have to get grape instead. Karen cries and runs away. No joke, she cries harder over the cherry ice cream than anything else in the book. Because being forced to get grape is the worst thing ever. At dinner, the family talks about bad days. Karen lists everything bad that happened to her. Then her eyes flash blue because she set a bad day record for most bad things ever. Setting a record means it's a good day. The good day continues when Charlie and Sam take her out to get ice cream. Karen meets their ethnically diverse group of friends, and she's happy when the high schoolers are nice to her. Karen brags about this for a page. 
She apologizes to Andrew and Hanny, and she turns the apology into an excuse for more bragging. Christy helps put Karen to bed, and she goes to sleep happy. The end. Postbook follow-up. This graphic novel is okay. The main problem is the story. There's not much of an attempt at an ongoing story. It's just a series of unrelated things that Karen gets mad about. Some of them are more interesting than others. I thought the pacing in the last chapter and a half was weak, but it's not terrible, and you can kind of blame the original book for that. The last three chapters of that book are weak. I remember the original book had Karen list out everything bad that happened multiple times. This version minimizes the complaints, which is nice. Like, I'm sorry you thought they were out of cereal this morning, Karen, but they weren't. And that was hours ago at this point, so stop complaining about it. The artwork is fine. Karen expresses her emotions in two ways. Either she has circle eyes with no pupils, or giant sideways eyes with tiny pupils that freak me out. Also, she has tear circles at the corner of her eyes. She's constantly making these faces throughout the entire book. Overall, it's the story of Karen complaining about her bad day, then throwing temper tantrums over it, and then everything turns nice. I hope kids don't read this book and learn the lesson that temper tantrums make everything better. I give Babysitter's Little Sister graphic novel number three, Karen's Worst Day, a sideways thumbs up.